What's up YouTube? Alright, so today I am going to replace the old motor on my 1977 Toro 724 snowblower. I got the Predator 6.5 horsepower Harbor Freight motor here that I'm going to swap over, well, hopefully, and, uh, and film this as I go along. Um, of course, this is something I had planned on doing weeks ago during the summer when it was good and warm. Now here we are in December in New York for the first real 30 degree weekend. And I'm stuck doing this outside. Got my heater over here behind me, hopefully that'll help. And that's that, let's follow along. So this is a Toro 724 snowblower that I picked up used a couple of years ago. Um, it's a 77 or possibly a 78 I believe, <clears throat> which makes it just about 40 years old. So a 40, old, 40 year old machine that I picked up for relatively cheap and have had to put a couple of bucks into when I first got it. I masked everything off and gave it a, a coat of red spray paint. Um, I've changed the spherical bushing. The impeller bushing, I think it's also called. Um, I've replaced the carburetor. Uh, just last weekend I did that impeller upgrade kit with the rubber strips. That was the first weekend I pulled the snowblower out of storage for the year. And the motor is just, it's not running well. It never has run well. It is on its last legs. Um, so I decided that for the $100 that it was going to cost me, $100 and change, for a new motor on this thing, it was worth a try. Um, I'm still in for far less than what I might pay for a brand new snowblower, and uh, this is a, a beast of a machine anyway, so if it's running properly, I think I'll be real happy with it. So anyway, let me get this old motor off and uh, see if we can't get the new motor on. Let's see, before I begin, I'll give a little information on this motor too. Hopefully I got the right thing here. It's the Predator motor from Harbor Freight. It's a Honda clone. 212 works out to be six and a half horsepower from what I've been told. I don't know if it actually lists a power rating anywhere on it. There's the item number. And uh, I'll go show the receipt too. Alright guys, here's the receipt from Harbor Freight for the motor. There's the uh, Item number or whatever it's called, 60363. Surprising everything, note that coupon number, that could probably be used by somebody. That was a uh, coupon for, was this the 25% off? No, the 25% off coupon didn't work. And I had a coupon that was specifically for the motor for 99 bucks. So the first hit snag that I'm already hitting is uh, these mounting bolts are stripped. I assume there's something tack welded on the back side of this and that or something. Um, so I guess I'm probably going to have to take the whole plate off from there rather, from, rather than from there. Alright, so we got the motor off the machine. Wasn't all too difficult to do. Relatively straightforward. I had trouble locating the correct size tools here and there, but got it off and that's all that matters now. So there's the mess that this thing left behind. This thing was spewing oil and gas everywhere. Um, it was definitely time for a replacement. I'm going to clean all this stuff up and uh, see if I can't make the new motor.
Alright guys, so that's clean enough for my purposes. I'm going to go ahead now and uh, do an unboxing on the Predator motor. And uh, I'll link to that video here. I'll make that a separate video. Alright, so here's the two motors side by side. My old Tecumseh 7 horsepower from 1977. And my new Predator 212 6 and a half horsepower. I'm going to have to use a conversion on that output shaft. I'm going to have to get that pulley off of this motor. And I have to get the plate off the bottom of the motor and swapped over to the new one. Okay, so I got the new motor lined up on the mounting plate easily enough. However, the deck, the mounting deck, I guess I'll call it here, on the new motor, bottom of the block, is much larger than the plate that the older motor was on here. So there's the bolt that came out of the old motor that's not even tall enough to go through the new block. So I'm going to have to go around to the hardware store and get something that will fit there. Hopefully in the meantime, I ordered the adapter for the output shaft, as well as new jets for the carburetor, so hopefully this thing will run better in the colder weather. So with any luck, those will be sitting at my doorstep by the time I get home, and I can take care of that. Alright, so I went ahead and got some hardware. Four bolts, four nuts, eight washers, five sixteenths of an inch by inch and a half long, five sixteenths nut. And I will go ahead and mount the block. Alright, so the new motor is on. Ironically enough, there's a couple of snow flurries falling right now. I don't think I'll get a chance to use the machine yet, but anyway, I <clears throat> mounted up easily enough. I used those 5 sixteenths, um, inch and a half long bolts through the block, through the mounting plate, and then used the stock bolts to do the mounting plate to the machine. And as you might imagine, the other side looks pretty much the same. And now I am going to fiddle with the throttle control and see if I can't get the dead man switch to actually operate the engine. Um, see what I can do there. I guess I'm going to have to forsake the electric start off the old motor. That shouldn't be too big of a deal. And uh, I'll put some oil on this thing. I'll put some gas in this thing. And then do the three hour break in period that the Predator manual states I should do. So I'll do a three hour break-in period. It doesn't say to change the oil immediately thereafter, but I think I'm going to anyway. Um, hopefully I will receive that delivery before I get a chance to do all that. And uh, I want to change the jet, the main jet and the carburetor. Probably drill out the idle jet. I haven't decided on that yet, but I'll keep filming it. Alright, so my package came. Here is my output shaft uh, adapter, I guess we'll call it. Let's go ahead and make sure this is actually going to work. So I got the pulley on, I got the output, output shaft uh, converter, conversion bushing, 
It's a little longer than I needed. I don't think that's going to make much of a difference as long as it doesn't come into contact with anything. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and get the belts on. set I got an extended drain hose there on the uh, oil drain plug uh, I went ahead and changed the spark plug I went ahead and changed one of the carburetor jets my battery had died on the camera so I didn't get to show any of that but I'm gonna go ahead fill it up with oil fill it up with gas and try to start this thing it's gonna take half a quart I'm gonna use some 1030 synthetic <clears throat> This funnel is not going to work. Alright, moment of truth. Oh, well first, let's make sure... The oil is full. I made a big mess. And I lost the dipstick. There we go. Started up on the first pole. Alright, so everything looked real good. The thing started up on the first pull. Let it run for a couple of minutes and shut it down. I'll go ahead and do the full three hour break in period uh, at another time. Uh, but I'm pretty pleased with everything that happened. I just want to make a correction. I was incorrect before when I said that I got uh, an adapter sleeve that might have been too long. I was definitely incorrect because the pulley from the old machine doesn't want to seat all the way against the motor here, otherwise, the belts won't line up. So, the excess on that adapter sleeve is, uh, is almost like a spacer back there. So I put the excess to the rear, and that pushes the pulley flush with everything in the front here, and then lines up the belts perfectly. Alright guys, let me know what you think. Give this video a thumbs up if it helped you. Subscribe to my channel, leave a comment below, share the video, and I will see you guys in another one.